Yes. Who should be presenting. I'm looking for my presentation because something went wrong. Can you see now the, yes, the, the presentation? Okay. Not in, now it's oh. in presentation mode also. Okay. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to everyone. I'm Philip Moreira. I'm a PhD student at uh, Multimed in Education at the Univers University of Aveiro. And um, we would like to present you the conceptualization of hypersituation as a result of UT in education. Because as you know, we are experience a moment where a lot of data is produced and the humans are not the only ones who produce data. Now we have objects who produce data, even animals or plants produce data. And with this, um, <clears throat> we can develop as society, as humankind, we can develop a knowledge in different areas that uh, was not possible in the past. And we can go deep in our knowledge about any, anything and new stuff. So in this framework, in this reality, uh, some reports and researchers uh, say that EOT has a, a big potential for education and can improve our educational environments and change some paradigms and some methodologies. And in some of these reports and some of these searches, uh, the, the, they present hyper situation as uh, a, the biggest potentiality of uh, a IoT in education. And this the term hyper situation was first uh, said by uh, Mara Hancock in an uh, opinion text. And uh, she, it's funny because she uses this, this hyper situation because she said that uh, she didn't see a better one, you know, because this terminology is used for some years in literature, for example, with a, a different uh, meaning, but it's used for several years from now to now. So, in first, we would like to differentiate hyper situation from hyper situated experience because we can have an environment that is hyper situated, but we cannot have hyper situated experience because hyper situated experience depends on the user or the student in this context. And we believe that hyper situated experience may contribute to a large. Um, scale to, to the emergence of new pedagogical situations and contexts. Here in these two images, on the left, you can see uh, a girl, she is outside and she can interpret the environment by their, her own senses, her own knowledge, uh, and maybe she can ask to someone to help to interpret the, the, the environment, or maybe she can go to the internet and search. But on the right uh, image, she is connected to the objects, to Internet of Things, and all the objects are connected. And they are the possibility to send her data from the data that the objects has, you know. So she can, uh, as she can have um, a deeper understanding of the, the reality because uh, now I can stay here in my in my room, but I, I can uh, know which plane are passing uh, on the sky, or how is the traffic outside, how is the weather outside, for example. And it's it's common when we talk about hyper situation, uh, people argue about hyper reality, but it's two there are two two different concepts. On hyper situation, we use technology to access new layers of reality. And on hyperreality, we add new layers to reality through technology, for example, augmented reality. And how to achieve this hyper situation? It's not easy, but it's not impossible. And we, as we have uh, lots of more objects connected to the internet, it's becoming more easy. 
and also with the development of the artificial intelligence. But we can obtain that uh, data from uh, local devices or from open data from institutions or from companies, for example. And we need a platform and this platform will uh, communicate with the student and student will communicate with the platform and with the platform will provide data to the student that is contextualized with his age, his location and his interests. And this can be very uh, a positive way to, to change the classroom because the classroom may become an open space. As I said before, I can stay here in my room, but I can receive real data in real time from the outside, the, the, the surrounding environment, and I can read the world in a perspective that without these technologies, uh, I cannot. And uh, we have also, of course, as I said before, the possibility to have a deeper understanding of the world because we have access to new layers of, of data. And as everything, hyper situation or hyper situated experiences are not all positive things. So there are some challenges like the difficulty to create these hyper, hyper situated environments because we need a lot of technology. We need a very powerful platform and we need to put these, all of these working together to provide the data, contextualize it to the students, to his interests, what he is learning in the moment, his location and so on. We also need to train teachers because in our empirical study, we saw that all the teachers who participate in the, the study, none know about Internet of Things. They didn't know what is Internet of Things. Uh, we also will need to, to adapt the educational methodologies and also the educational resources. They will need to, we need to, to improve these resources, especially the, the, the textbook that is the main research we use here in Portugal. And um, we, we believe that with these technologies in, in the future, we will have not a textbook, but a textbook, but a smart book that is uh, up, updated all the time in real time with data and uh, is changing according with the location and the reality of the student. And in the last, the last challenge, challenge is the safety because we are talking about, in my case, obvious, about teenagers and we need to improve safety, the safety questions because they, the students in a per situation will also send data to the platform. So we need to, to, to be careful in these in this senses. And uh, as final remarks, uh, however, despite the consensus that seems to exist in the scientific community, com community sorry, about the hyper situation being the great potential of your teen education, there is a need of empirical studies that attest this idea. And uh, to, to show us, we need the empirical studies to show us how, how, how this will impact in the co cognitive way in the students. In our empirical study, the, the students didn't experience a really hyper situation, you know, but uh, they were almost there with our empirical study and the kids or the teenagers who were more close of the hyper situation, they had better results on motivation, on the, the, the feeling of learning. And uh, they, they say that they felt more uh, curious about the subjects and want to, to learn more, to go more deeper in the knowledge about the, the, the educational contents. That's some references and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for the for the presentation. We have time for a quick comment. Uh, if anybody has, uh, do you see a risk of this potentially increase uh, the the divide? Sorry. Do you see a risk of this uh, dividing even more because it's. Uh, 
it requires technology that you need both to use, but also you need to maybe the financial resources, technical resources. Um, for example, in, in Portuguese, in Portugal, Portuguese reality, we have a, uh, we are a small country, but we have uh, very different realities in schools. For example, in the cities, we have nice internet. Most of schools have nice computers, or at least computers for students. Uh, but in some small towns, it, that's not reality. So when we do this passage for these um, smart environments, if we can say this per situation, uh, we can create a more uh, a bigger gap between the kids who have access to technologies that the ones who don't. And uh, it's obvious because for 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 this and even to use the internet of things in a, in a massive way in schools we need uh, a lot of money um, even to improve our uh, resources to to put a nice internet on schools to develop um, tasks for students for example and and teachers training and uh, this development will be done in into to two different ways you know i don't know if it, that was your question it yes I, I think yeah. that this is a long discussion of course yeah. that uh, yeah. one uh, could uh, take on i think that uh, i have to to close uh, here because of uh, we have run out of uh, of time uh, I want to thank all uh, the presenters of this uh, of this session and the the audience. So a, a clap again to all of you. And uh, I think that uh, if uh, people have a question, they may take uh, contact you during the coffee break or directly in the via email or chat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.